So today I actually have to cook a, my mother gave me a whole leg of lamb. So I've got to try to cook that up. And if you've been watching the vlog for a while, or you haven't, it doesn't matter. Um, I don't have an oven at home, so cooking big lumps of meat like that can be tricky. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cook it on the fire. Now, cooking a whole leg on the fire is pretty challenging. So I'm going to do one or two things. I haven't quite decided what I'm going to do yet, um, but I'll take you along process. So I'm either going to try to make a bushcraft fire spit. So like a spit rotisserie, but fully bushcraft out of timber and then kind of suspend it from my setup there. Uh, or I will do the two fire method. So the two fire method I like, I've done it before. And that's the reason why I have such a long um, fire pit here. So Basically what the two fire method is, is we get the lamb or whatever you're cooking, you hang it from the middle and then you create two fires either side of the, of the, of the meat and then you have some coals, some coals underneath. So it creates almost like an oven space in between there. Um, to be honest at the moment, that's probably the way I'm looking at going. Um, I would love to do a bushfire spit, but, um, I think it might be, I do have some other things to do today. It might be maybe just a little bit too big of an undertaking um, for today. And, you know, I'll have to be around all day to turn it every time because it's only going to cook one side at a time. Whereas if we do the two fire method, it's almost like it's going in. Well, it, it's more kind of radiant heat, like it's circulating around the lamb. So I'm thinking that's the way I'm, I'm going to go. And here's our lovely piece of lamb. Look at that. That is a fair old hunk of meat so it's a full lamb leg there so i'll be doing the cooking video for it shortly but that is looking good isn't it loony you're not getting any though you're not getting any though oh, you might get a little nibble magnificent beast so yep that's the lamb hey vlog so it is time to start Prepping up, oh Jesus, <laughs> prepping up our lamb. So this is our lamb leg. So we're gonna start getting him ready. Um, I really have no idea how long it's gonna take to cook. It's like three o'clock now. I'm hoping on the fire we can get it done in, I don't know, three hours. Could be up to me, I don't know, I don't know. I could be still up bloody nine o'clock at night roasting this, but we'll see how we go. Okay. Right, here is our beautiful, and it is, really, it is a really nice piece of meat. Um, so the first thing we're going to do is we're just going to cut a bit of this, just dry it, basically. It doesn't need to be bone dry, but get most of the moisture on top of him. Okay, so now we're just going to take a sharp knife and we're going to lightly score the, the, the top of the lamb here just to help kind of get some of the flavours into him. So we don't want to go real deep down into the meat, just the light score. So I've picked probably not the worst day to try to do this. I'm going to say it's the worst, but like it's quite windy outside. So I'm not looking forward to tending to the fire the whole time where this is going on. But, hey, you, know, you gotta do it, you gotta do it. I can't really leave this lamb sit just for too long. So there we go. There's our lamb scored. I don't think, of, nah, I'm not gonna go across any, any further than that. That's fine pretty much as he is. Got it. Now the beauty of starting with such a beautiful piece of meat is you don't need to really do too much to it to make it great. Um, what I've done here is just a little bit of rosemary and thyme. Um, not much, probably. I don't know, chefs don't really measure things much, but I don't know, maybe a tablespoon worth in there. Uh, so what I'm also going to do, I'm going to put maybe about four cloves worth, maybe five cloves worth of um, garlic in here. Now I am using just jarred garlic because I, I don't have any fresh garlic. So otherwise I probably would use fresh garlic. So we're also going to put in some mustard. This is just Dijon mustard. 
maybe I don't know, like a tablespoon's worth probably. Maybe a little bit more. I don't know, I like this stuff. I'm not gonna skip on it. Alright. Now, salt and pepper. So salt. This is just cooking salt. Again, quantities are, um, I don't know, maybe a tablespoon, possibly. And then some ground pepper. Now, I actually like to put both ground pepper and cracked pepper in. That's just a weird, weird little idiosyncrasy of mine. So I don't know if it actually, I think it makes it taste better, but that's just me. I like the ground pepper because it kind of really, the ground pepper really gets on the meat, gets in the cracks. But the cracked pepper gives it that beautiful aroma and just makes it really, really delicious, in my opinion. Thousands would probably disagree with me, but hey, screw them. This is this is me. And then we're just going to use enough olive oil just to um, get it to combine together. Ooh, what's wrong with the breather hose on that? Just so we can generously coat it. Mix it up. Now I did I. I didn't actually have a lot of rosemary in time. I probably, if like, as in I physically just didn't have much. Um, I would probably have put maybe more, a fair bit more in there if I had it. So I just, I'd put about a tablespoon in. If I had more, I probably would have put double that amount, so about two tablespoons. And then we're just gonna whisk this together. Oh, that already smells delicious. Now, a lot of people wouldn't season the underside because, you know, it is a lot of bone, but there is a big piece of meat here, so I always like to season the underside. Beautiful. All right. So now, we get messy, and we simply rub this all over our land. So once, like, don't be afraid with the mustard about it being too overpowering. A lot of that flavour will kind of cook out and just give you a really beautiful crust. So yeah, a re really, really nice crust you'll end up on something like this. Make sure anywhere where there's meat, anywhere where there's fat, we coat really well. This morning I was talking about I didn't know how I was going to cook it, whether I was going to try to make a bushcraft spit and um, spit roast it or whether I'm just going to do the two fire method. Um, I'm going to do the two fire method just because I didn't have time today to um, try to do a bushcraft spit, but maybe another day. I'm sure there'll be more things I'll be cooking over the fire without a doubt, so some other time I'll make a bushcraft spit and that'll be exciting. So. That's the land pretty much prepped up. Now what we're going to do is get this dude here. So it's for holding meat over the fire. It's got a little loop there so it can hang. And we're going to whack him in here. And then he's basically ready to go then. We'll just wait. I'll we'll have to build the fires and get the oven preheated. And then we'll be all good to go. I've lost all my chopping boards. Off for a second. Put this 
guy down, but all we do is we'll just sit him in the middle there. And this is like an expander mesh in the middle. So I'm trying not to get marinade all over everything, but that will be easier said than done. Close this dude up. And we have it. That is our lamb roast, lamb leg. Ready to go. Now all we need to do is back the fire and we can get cooking. And there's our lamb. Whole leg of lamb. Ready to be cooked up. Here we go, it's on. So we've got burner number one, burner number two, and our roast hanging there in the middle. So I'll probably have to, once I get some coals here, out of these two fires, what I'll do is I'll start dragging some coals up underneath here. So it probably is actually even a little bit early to have the roast on, but the fire's going. So if nothing else, it'll get a, bit, a little bit of a smoky flavor into it. I'll start with that, so it's on. Now we just play the waiting game. So here we are, here's our lamb after about, I don't know, 20 minutes or so. It's starting to char up on the sides nicely and that smoke's really getting into it. Getting into it. Um, if you are ever gonna do campfire cooking, one kind of concept, one thing you gotta wrap your head around right from the start is it's not like putting a roast in an oven you know it's not set and forget type cooking so you've really got to watch this you need to watch the fires you need to manage the fires because you know they are open fires meaning they burn out quickly and you know things don't cook as evenly doing it this way as they do in an oven so you know every 20 minutes to half hour depending on how hot and everything's going this lamb will need to be flipped so you'll have to come out and be flipped around front to back side to side just to make sure we got even cooking. That's what I'm gonna do right now. So we're about an hour and a half into the cook time so far and it is really starting to look and smell amazing. And this is our finished leg of lamb. I'm hoping it's done, I'm not 100% sure. I would usually probably use a meat thermometer but I don't have one here but I'm eating it regardless. So, update on the lamb, it was delicious. Um, probably wouldn't want it cooked any longer than that, but it was very, very scrumptious. Tiny bit dry on the outside, but it still had a nice lamb blush in the middle, so. But hey, that's campfire cooking. It was awesome.